good for right now, okay? Okay. Okay, so folks, what we have to do today is we are doing a lab that answers these purpose statements. And you also see I have the word include in parentheses. Because when you're all done, you're going to be typing this up, like in a Word document or a Google Doc. And so I want you to have the purpose there. And then I want you to write an introduction. The introduction is going to be like a paragraph. And I'm thinking, or I want you to think back to 10th grade or 11th grade, what we learned about an introduction. It's like the background that people need to understand so that the lab makes sense. Here's two ways to know if you wrote a good introduction. Number one is you answer all the dots. Okay, you don't have to do the dots in order, but you've got to turn those dots into a paragraph. And here's way number two. You give it to mom or dad and say, mom or dad, would you read this introduction? Do you understand what I was trying to do in physics class today? And if mom or dad says, this makes no sense to me, then your introduction is not written. Wow. It needs to be like, you know, explaining it to an eighth grader kind of thing. All right, so here's some background that we need to understand. This is the kind of stuff that would go in the introduction. So let's pretend that I wanted to use a tool, like a thermometer. So I take this glass tube with me out in space, because I want to take the temperature of things on my spaceship. That glass tube is useless unless it's calibrated. So I'm like, oh, let me calibrate it first. So I'm going to dip it in some ice water. And then the stuff went down to there. That's zero degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to dip it in some boiling water. And then the stuff goes, expands, goes up to here. That's really all I would have to do to calibrate it. Because then halfway would be 50. And then I could go, you know, whatever. Okay, so now I have all these little tick mark thingies. And now my tool is calibrated. And so taking it out in space, it can be useful. All right, so we are going to do a different tool today. We need to be able to measure mass out in space. So usually when I measure mass, I use an electronic balance or a triple beam balance. But what's the problem with using that kind of balance out in space? There's no gravity. So I, I take this rock and I put it on my balance out in space and it says zero because there's no gravity. In fact, the rock might even just be floating around up here. So it's like I need a way to measure mass out in space. So the physics that we're talking about today is there's two kinds of mass. Mass is mass. There's really only one kind of mass, but there's two different ways to measure it. It's called gravitational mass. If I set this on a balance and I expect gravity to hold it down, that's what you and I have always used is gravitational mass. But when I go out in space, I don't have gravity. I need a new tool, a tool that uses inertial mass. So if you think back to last year, what is the definition of inertia? Resistance to change motion. And so instead of setting the, the rock down on the balance, we're going to shake it back and forth like this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? And if something is light, if something is light, it'll shake back and forth really easy. If something was heavy, boom, boom. Okay? It's going to be harder to go back and forth. So... When you go back and forth, the inertia of going back and forth is proportional to the mass. So this is going to be, this is where you're going, ah, no. We are going to use this thing right here. This is going to be our tool. And you can see that it goes back and forth. All right, but we need to know the equation that goes along with it. And the equation is this, T equals 2 pi, 
m over k. We had that equation the other day. Do you remember what k stands for? Spring class, that last hour, third hour, nobody remembers. Okay, it's a spring constant. Is that a spring? No, kind of a it boing, but it's not a spring. So now it has a new name. It's called the stiffness constant. So one of the things is we want to find the stiffness constant. And when I say stiffness constant, it's the stiffness of these rails. Right here. It's like how stiff are those rails? Because if those rails were made out of like, I'm trying to think of uh -oh. A lighter metal, they would boil a lot faster than they do now. So, one of the things you're trying to do is find the k value, the stiffness constant. But we're going to pretend that our classroom, well, we're going to pretend that we're going to go out in space. And while we're out in space, we're going to pick up a moon rock. So, here are your choices of moon rock. They all have numbers on it one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. I don't know where moon rock four is. Yeah, I do. No, I don't. All right, I'll find it. So, here are the rocks. You, you will only need to use one rock. The rock goes in the gray box at the bottom. Okay, so whatever rock you use there at the bottom. All right, but in order for me to take this tool out in space, like the thermometer, we have to calibrate this tool. So we're going to come back to what I wrote on the board. Now, Alex is going to get me using this tool. So, we're going to go like this. You point it, Alex. <laughs> okay, so you point it so this shows on the thing. Okay. You are supposed to not be on the internet. Okay, be invisible as you're rolling. All right, so this is. So, try to get it down a little bit more. You back it up to the mic. Up. It's not easy being a video person, you know? A little bit more. A little bit more. Perfect. Okay, here we go. All right. So, right now, this is not calibrated. So, in order for us to calibrate it, calibrate means come up with the y plus mx plus b equation. The thermometer, I need a tick mark. All I need to know is why was I supposed to be? And if somebody could write that on this, this is now a useful tool. So I'm going to explain that part to you at the end of the hour. Right now, we got to get the y was I supposed to be. So we have to get that by collecting some data. So your first trial says mass. So I'm going to put some mass on here. I'm going to Use this little guy. And so I'm going to take him on. And for those of you who don't have a setup at your table, you're going to have to build the setup. You'll notice that one of the sides has a hole in it. There's a hole in the hand. It doesn't matter. We're, we're ignoring the hole. All right, so I'm just going to take him on pretty good. By the way, extra tape is error because I don't know the mass of the tape. All right, so I have 100 grams on. So I'd be writing down 100 grams. Don't write it down because you might not use this. Then I got to change the grams of each other. All right, here goes. I have to measure the capital T, the time for one boing. So I pull it off to the side. And mark the tick goes white. There's one. All right, that's going to be too hard. So let it boing 10 or 15 times. I'll do 10. Here goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I record that time, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to, we're going to minimize random error by doing that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can write that down. Or you can have all three people measure at the same time and get three different T's. But then you see how we're going to average the T. Are you with me? Okay. All right. That was trial one. Here goes trial two. Add more mass. So take some more on. What do you think is going to happen to the T value when I take more mass on? Take it in well. 
Okay, so now I can put more mass on. It's going to go a little bit slower, which means the T value is going to get bigger because it's heavier. What if I use this guy? Boom. Listen. You get a chunk, chunk, chunk. That means he's too heavy. He's breaking him. Too heavy. In fact, the reason it's doing that is like he's actually kind of like bending downward, like gravity. Like he's too heavy. This is a thousand. So don't go over a thousand because he's too heavy. But you're going to keep adding mass and measure the time. If I did it 10 times, I'd have to divide by 10 to get the time for one born. Does that make sense? And we did it three times to minimize random error, and then we averaged it. So at the end of the hour, you're going to have that whole table completed. The very last thing you're going to do in that gray box is you're going to say, okay, now that this is calibrated, even though we don't know the answer yet, even though now it's calibrated, pick up and graph. Do your moon rack, and then at the end of the hour, we'll figure out how you can find the mass of the moon rack. Does that make sense? All right, we just have to collect our data right now. Okay, now I'm going to come around and I'm going to be taking some pictures and some video clips. Okay, all right, so find who you're working with and all your stuff is in the back. Okay, all right, thank you, Al. What's the service now? All right. You know what? We're not going to put it on hold until the end of the hour. I told you.